It is early morning in Denmark and uh, today we are going to London. The customer that we are going to visit today uh, has promised me an interview and his honest opinion about the simulator um, and uh, with him uh, using it every day for the past uh, few months, uh, he's a quite good candidate to say if it's good or not. Obviously we can't say because we have developed it for six years now and uh, you know, it's, it's better for you all to hear what others think of the platform that we're making. So I just arrived at Stansted Airport and it will be a few hours before I'm getting picked up. Unfortunately the plane was a little early here, um, so I will have to kill some time. You have been so kind to invite me into your own home and show me your uh, setup for the simulator. You have some, some custom made things on your simulator too also. You have had your simulator for a few months now and I would like to ask you if, if you think that it has improved your driving or, or you had to get adjusted to it. Okay, yeah, so from the start, um, getting used to the simulator was difficult to begin. Mm -hmm. um, it took many hours of practice and fine tuning to get the right settings that was also kind of realistic for the car that I was driving. So after time of getting used to it, yeah, it's improved my yeah. times, my confidence. Um, it feels better. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's positive. Now we have the rotation module and we have the heave. That's not common in, in our price range, of course. Was there something you wish was there or wasn't there on the simulator? Um, hmm. So before um, I got the simulator, I'd actually been down and tested mm -hmm. um, some other simulators. So I found that okay, even before I, I, I knew uh, what the race cube could do. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't satisfied with that very high price range yeah. for that setup. Yeah, I didn't feel as if it was giving me any anything um, that was worth spending that type of money on. I didn't feel as if it was adding um, enough immersion to warrant paying that money. Yeah, uh, and this was a lot, a lot of money. Okay. Uh, going into 20,000. In comparison uh, to what uh, I have in the race cube, mm. there, is, um, uh, there is no comparison because mm. the race cube is way ahead mm. uh, in, in terms of movement uh, and especially with the rotation. Um, uh, in, in answer to your first question, do I think it's fast enough? Um, yes, mm -hmm. uh, it's more than fast enough because when you get into um, tuning the, the simulator with the sim tools, um, I found that uh, you have to reach the right balance for um, sim racing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too sure how that is with uh, flight simulators, but uh, most certainly with sim racing. Um, you you have to reach that balance okay. so um, you can have too much yeah uh, so the race cube offers um, the ability to have too much mm. uh, once you reach that because you will um, experiment with with those settings yeah uh, and then you will find that you have to turn it down the dog takes over <laughs> and uh, wants to drive yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I just arrived in Milton Keynes and um, I'm going to visit uh, a guy called Andy that has a, a virtual reality center here uh, called Vertigo VR. Um, I'm going to take a look at one of their uh, simulators, unfortunately because they have some problems um, with their uh, rotation modules. Um, but. Um, 
I'll also have a quick tour in uh, the premises and uh, see how uh, they're doing um, and see how they are using the um, the uh, simulator that uh, that they have gotten a few months back. So hopefully uh, it's going well and the uh, business is blooming. Virtual Reality Center and uh, I have a few guys here that we want to talk to. Uh, obviously they bought one of our simulators and uh, we want to know how that is going. So, hello. Um, so you're working here in uh, the Premise, right? right? Are you owners here? You're the owner. Oh, you're the I'm owner. one of the uh, corners of uh, in project co-creators. Okay. And uh, Connor here is uh, responsible for our social media exposure. Oh, so cool. he would be a person responsible for us looking here to the outer world. Yeah. Well, I'm responsible for the tech being in a working condition. Yeah. I would say, or producing the uh, experience that expected. Okay, I see. What was the reason for you starting this uh, in this particular area? Did you see a need for virtual reality or a gaming cafe or what is what are you trying to We've do here? We've seen uh, this particular town as Milton Keynes. That's the uh, the youngest town in the whole of the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So it, it's good as well for all the new things to start. In fact, the first trampoline park started here in uh, in MK. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if the first undercross snow slope started here as well. But uh, very much might be the case. At least we have one across the road. Yeah. And uh, we thought for the uh, very unusual gaming center, it would be uh, the right place to be. I just arrived back at the airport. I said goodbye to Andy from the uh, VR arcade, and uh, my job is done in England. Tomorrow morning, very early, I'll go home again. And um, I was supposed to go to London to um, to take the train to to the airport again, but it showed that it was a little bit cheaper to to just take the taxi all the way uh, instead of taking the train. Um, so yeah, here I am. It's very late, and I really just want to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs>